Happy Spooktober, fellow artists. If, like me, you're a serial killer of brushes, then stay tuned for today's evaluation of three different brush cleaning products to see which one gets that gunk out of brushes the best. If you want to see more videos like this, please like and subscribe. Hi, I'm Marianne Bland, and today we're going to look at three ways to bring dead brushes back to life. So I just got back from evacuation. And uh, a lot of these brushes are what I would consider fully deceased. Got completely bent over, really stiff, very full of oil paint. Wow, that is a severe case of rigor mortis. So we are going to see if any of these three cleaning products I have will do the trick. In order of least toxic to most toxic, we're going to try three cleaners today. The first is Marvelous Marianne Savvy Soap Hand and Brush Cleaner, which clearly I am biased towards, although I did not create it. Made from corn products, relatively safe. Can be used with or without water. These are the ingredients. Now, Citrus Olive smells amazing and it is fairly natural, but you know it's here combustible. So, generally if something can catch fire, that makes it more dangerous. You better reach your children. Primarily orange peel oil and lumine. See here? Paint brushes. All right. Test drawers. Enamel thinner and brush cleaner. Danger, flammable, fatal, skull and crossbones. Why did I buy this? All of this small print says, probably don't use this, but for those severe cases, we will see. All right, now most of my bristles are synthetic, so I made sure that these were, we have a bright, a filbert, oh, sorry filbert, and a liner. Okay, first we're gonna turn Marvelous Marianne's, which is work product into bristles to clean and soften, even hardened paint, rinse with water and air dry. All right, so we're gonna let that sit and I only use that one with my fingers because it's also a hand cleaner. Now, this one's Citrusol, I had used before. There is a note down here that says, avoid contact with some plastics may be damaging. Now, they say to dilute this and you do get quite a bit for general cleaning, but I think for a tough job like trying to bring a brush back from dead, it's a little bit more intensive and you should probably go full strength, especially since you can use it like a regular medium. Okay, so it's already flexing more, which is pretty awesome. You can see kind of a little bit of that color coming out of it, just a smidgen of kind of that brownish. It literally gives you no instructions. It's in a glass jar. So it's not to breathe this, I'm gonna go get a fan. Okay, so this smells terrible. I've got my fan going, which you can hear in the background. All these cloths that I'm dropping this on, I'm gonna dispose of the same way I do oil paint, which means in a ceiling metal bin, there's even a little plastic stopper you can put back in there to try to stop those fumes from coming out and then it's got a special block so we're going to take our biggest brush and see how this goes now it doesn't seem to be loosening up as quickly as the citrus oil but it's also a bigger brush with more paint so with all the three of these, I'm gonna leave them soaking in their respective brush cleaners for about 20 minutes. And then we're gonna come back and see the results. Remember this one is fairly non-toxic, so I'm gonna have to check. All right, it's still 
still feeling really stiff, although you can see that there's better separation in the bristles. All right, the Citrusol Filbert. It looks like I can still see some paint on there, but let's take a look at that. Okay, so you can still kind of see some paint on those bristles, but it's very soft, really pliable. Okay, spring. You see, there's still a little bit of a tilt to it, but not nearly as bad as when we started. It's pretty impressive. Now you can see a lot of that green came off, but not all of it. Okay, so it comes off on the towel. Good. Pressure applied to the bristle strip with some extra paint without touching it. All right, well, that's certainly more flexible than it was before. Probably get that uh, second go round in like a citrus hole. Mind if you actually be able to paint with it. Bristles are still a bit unhappy. Hmm. Okay, so I'm initially going to say our big winner is citrus hole. But I haven't tried this in natural brushes, and I have a bunch more. So we're gonna stick that in this glass. Let them soak, see how those go. All right, so moment of truth on my larger scale test. These have been soaking. See, so something I really want to point out here, see this is really interesting. This B and these are definitely coming out. It's your very traditional chip brush, which are so cheap, they're not really worth saving. This has got all kinds of different stuff in it. I'm not happy, it's not coming out. There's another death. Guys, this is the one I did in that terrible, nasty stuff. And then I let it soak extra in the citrus salt. That made a, a much bigger difference. All the stuff that was on there is gone. How flexible that is. It's great. <sighs> Before you send me hate mail, this is a Kalinsky Red Sable. It's a very old brush that I have, and it is natural fiber. Sadly, it comes from a weasel, and I am not buying these anymore because I don't want to hurt animals. And you can see here that after soaking like that, that's kind of breaking up. All right, so our overall winner was Citrusol, which is going to work best for synthetics and synthetic blends. Not so great on natural brushes as it might remove some of the bristles. Try it though diluted, not full strength. In terms of acrylic versus oil, give it a shot on both. I tend to use water mixable oils the most, and there's a kind of like a blend between acrylic and oil. So hopefully these results will work on both types of paint. Thanks guys. Let me know how it worked in the comments.